Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, now, in the last video, did the firmware upgrade on the MTR Win05. Criticised it a little bit for not being able to measure the voltage output on an inverter that I'm demonstrating here currently with the little uh, Invertec unit I have here and the MTR105 in three phase voltage mode. And you can see the voltage is jumping around. It should be somewhere around about uh, 220 volts. And our frequency there should be at 50 hertz, um, but it's greater than 400 hertz. And as I say, the voltage is going all over the place. And one of the viewers of that video posed the question about how many meters there are actually out there that can measure the output of an inverter that is unfiltered, as is the case with this one. And it's a fair point, the noise coming out of the output of these inverters is absolutely horrific uh, as far as a sinusoidal waveform goes and it will affect the operation of a lot of instruments uh, but that got me thinking as to the number of instruments I have kicking around and how many of them have this capability of measuring the inverter output so what you see here is the instrument on three phase mode you think it's quite erratic in that if I switch this to uh, we're on AC DC mode there you can see it now uh, becomes a little bit more stable. Um, the frequency is still over 400 hertz, but voltage-wise, the, the reading is bad, but it is a little bit more stable than previously on three-phase mode. Similar sort of operation on just standard AC mode as well. But it does surprise me because Mega are touting this as a rotating machine tester, and it costs an awful lot of money. Nowadays, there are inverters everywhere. A lot of motors are inverter-fed. So I would have expected this meter to be able to make the measurements. Um, anyway, what I thought I'd do is compare it to a few of the other instruments I've got kicking around. And one of the obvious ones is to compare it to the Mega MIT 420. So obviously we've gone down to single phase measurements now. Uh, the MTR 105 is the only instrument that can do three phase uh, apart from a specialist clamp meter I've got. Uh, but you can see the MIT 420 operating pretty much in the same manner as the MTR105, so at least there's consistency across Mega, I guess, uh, but to me, uh, it should be able to do it. So, the next meter we will take a look at is, uh, I guess its main competitor that we have here is the Keysight U1461A. And you can see we are on 253, and if we go to Hertz, uh, we've actually got 4.99 kilohertz on this one, um, which is about half the nominal frequency coming out of this inverter. Um, but what we have on this is a low-pass filter. So if I press low-pass filter, you can see now the frequency has gone down to 50 hertz, 49.99, and 219.8 volts. Yeah, to 90.8.9, so totally stable, gives me a good frequency measurement, um, so that one works fine. Uh, obviously this is also a pricey meter in comparison to the MTR105, um, it's not quite as much but it's getting very very close, but we'll try another meter. So the next meter we can compare it to is the HG65 uh, from HG Instruments, um, this does not have any Filtration on it as far as I'm aware, there's no setting for it. Um, it's just standard reads AC or DC voltage, uh, and it does have a, a mode frequency as well. But you can see the voltage is pretty much smack on where I would expect it to be. Uh, the frequency that's not quite so good, that's a little bit more erratic. Not quite sure what's happened there. Strange that it picks up the voltage okay, but the frequency it doesn't like. Um, so that's that one. So the next meter half is the Bryman BM877. This is another insulation multimeter. This has true RMS and it also has a VFD mode, this calls it. Um, 238.8 but 7.95 kilohertz. So very much to the fundamental frequency of the inverter in true RMS mode. If I hit the button for VFD mode, you can see we drop down to 219.5, 50.01 50 hertz, I beg your pardon. Totally accurate, no problems with that one whatsoever. Um, so, put that one out of the way. 
and we will also look at interestingly enough is some clamp meters this Kiwitz also has the ability for a VFD mode uh, okay so there's standard AC mode there again 8 kilohertz much closer voltage 223 for our normal true RMS uh, but if we go to function mode uh, oh, VFD mode there now this one is slightly strange because in VFD mode we get a good voltage 220 um, but it's gone up to 11 and a half kilohertz uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening to that one it seems to be an error within the frequency measurement function of the VFD mode there um, so that's Kai Wheats um, the other one we'll go to another clamp meter there's a flur which is the CM46 now this one does have VFD mode I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see uh, up in the top corner there it does have a VFD symbol so that appears to be permanently on for this one and obviously 219.7 volts we've got there so that's very good um, DC mode and the CBC and then when we go to frequency we've got 49.82 Hertz so that one is smack on reading perfectly okay uh, so that's that one I do want to show you as well is the HT Neptune because as it's already pointed out these things have a monstrous uh, output on them um, but as we can see here we've got AC mode on this one uh, we have 241 volts spit out but we have got 50 Hertz but I want to show this up really because this does harmonics and if we hit the harmonics button you can see we've got 11 coming on 12 percent total on 13 there total harmonics distortion um, which is absolutely horrific once I've gone through this I'll put it onto the actual raw mains and show you that one in, in comparison so 11 to 12 um, percent what we can do with this as well we can step them so we can look at ones that have got the most harmonics so got 5.2 at the 24th harmonic there and the 8th and then 20th 25th so you can see there's an awful lot of harmonics inside this bouncing around all over the place uh, not very good at all we'll just switch him off and I'll just uh, take him there so there's our mains, 238.5, pretty standard for the UK. Uh, we go to harmonics, and all I've got is 2.5% total harmonic distortion there. Um, so you can see just how rough the output is of these inverters in comparison to the normal mains. But there is instrumentation out there that uh, can do the job for it. So I'm not really sure what Mega's problem is with their unit really. As I said, this is a horrific price. It is also touted as a specialist rotating machine tester. Uh, they've specifically built this three phase mode in. Given that a lot of motors are inverter fed out there these days, uh, I just don't understand it. Um, I know if you get filtration on this, it does work so hardware wise. This is a little setup I have behind here. Uh, there's a, a filter I built up that played around with it and I have a filter that goes in the top of this as well. As far as industry is concerned, in my experience of industry, you don't usually have inverters with a filter on the output. Um, they have filters to prevent harmonics going back into the mains because there's legislation for that and standards. Um, but as far as the motor goes, there are filters that can be offered for drives, but it's very rarely taken up because there's no real standard. So only if you've got a, an electrical engineer on the site who's looking for motor efficiency, that you would perhaps get a filter installed on an inverter other than that I found them to be quite rare but yeah I'll stick this table up um, so overall you can see all the instruments that I've managed to test some of them are not very good because they're rather basic insulation testers uh, and that's why I've looked to some of my meters and uh, clamp meters that I've got as well they do have that kind of functionality built into them okay so this table here covers all of the measurements that I made with all of the instruments 
uh, I guess the thing to pick up from this is at the very bottom uh, I made 22 meters I used across 14 different manufacturers and there's nine of them which have a VFD mode and can read the output okay um, if we flip this over into the next table you can see I've pulled out all the instruments that measured a true RMS measurement um, and you can see the vast majority of them are pretty much all over the place there's a lot of variability in both the voltage measurements and the frequency values that the meters displayed a couple of instruments that are of quite good interest are the Sono MIC30 and the Hyoki IIF4058 Dash two zero, uh, both of those are good. Two hundred twenty-two volts, so pretty accurate on the voltage measurement. They just don't have the capability to read frequency. Um, but this is just true RMS, so uh, interesting voltage reading, uh, but not all the information available from those instruments. Um, the other two we've highlighted there, the Chevron New CA six five two six. The voltage was is close, but it was oscillating just a little bit. Uh, but it did give a good 50.5 hertz frequency measurement and then also down at the bottom end of the table the UT216C um, in true RMS mode 225 volts and 50.29 that was probably the best true RMS result for measuring the inverter output there uh, I guess the Neptune, the HD Neptune that we demoed comes closest after that with 243.8 volts and 50.3 hertz as well um, and then final table here, these are all the instruments that have a VFD mode built into them or low pass filter mode or if you've got some match what you call it, VFIL, that's the mode for Again. them. All the instruments here, fairly consistent voltage measurement and frequency measurement across the range there. Um, the two that I've picked out on this one, the RS Pro IIT 1500, uh, 224.7 volts, so the voltage value is perfectly fine. But it can't display frequency. The meter just doesn't have the capability, which is kind of strange for an instrument that has an LPF mode. You want it to be able to display the frequency as well, really. And then finally, the Kai Weeks, the HT208D there in VFD mode. Uh, perfectly good voltage measurement, but frequency was 11.1 kilohertz. I think we demoed that one as well, so you'll have seen that. Um, so there's something wrong with that instrument with regard to its VFD measurement functionality. But say the rest of them there. They all have the capability to do it, so I don't understand why Mega haven't built it into their MTR105. I think it's a firmware upgrade, then they should be able to do it really, given the price of the instrument and what it's aimed at. So in terms of prices for these instruments, um, if we look down at the bottom end, the UT216C there, uh, 90 to 150 pounds you'll get that for in the UK, so that's probably the best value for money, uh, and does have the capability to measure uh, inverter output. UT196 follows that at around about 150 to 160 pounds in the UK. Um, closest ones to that after that are the BM877 and the CM46 clamp meter from Fleur. They are both somewhere around about the 250 pound mark, so fairly good value for money and VFD uh, capability built into both the instruments. After that, you'll get into the big names, the, the, the key site, the, the Fleur there, the Fluke, and of course the Gosson Metrobot itself. You're looking at above £700 and above for any of those instruments, so uh, you're really starting to splash out there. But if you do need an instrument to do it and with other functionalities, then they are available. But that's it for this video. Hope you have answered the question. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.